AMH or anti-malarial hormone. It's a very important test which has raised a lot of curiosity nowadays. This was a test which was introduced almost a decade ago and it became a very important marker of a women's reserve. Now why we speak about women's reserve so keenly or with so much importance is because every lady when she is born there is a certain number of eggs. You can imagine that you know there's a basket full of eggs at our birth. They don't get generated year on year. So there's a fixed number. As we grow older, they start getting activated at puberty and the peak number of eggs which are very nicely functional are somewhere between the 20s to the 30s. After early 30s, the egg number starts reducing drastically and beyond 35, there is an accelerated reduction. So this becomes almost nil at the time of menopause and that's how menopause ensues. So because there is a fixed number and we can't generate eggs at this point of time, Predicting a lady's reserve is extremely important. Across the world, menopause usually is around early 50s. But in India, we see that menopause in Indian women across our ethnicity is somewhere between 45 to 50. So our women tend to have early menopause. Not only that, there are some women in whom the eggs tend to get exhausted at a faster pace. We call it as premature ovarian insufficiency, that is an early reduction of the egg number or premature ovarian failure wherein there is complete, you know, the basket becomes completely empty resulting in an early menopause, say in 30s or 40s. Now early menopause means the fertility potential is also gone. Hence, there is an immense importance about AMH because this helps us know where is the lady with respect to her fertility potential. So if we know that she has adequate number of eggs, then she can plan her fertility around it, her pregnancies around it and then you know, take a call. So planning career and fertility both are equally important. So if we see women who are working at present, most of the women become extremely or rather financially independent somewhere in their 30s and they're at the peak of their career somewhere around 35. And increasingly I'm seeing that after 35 is when they start looking at a pregnancy. But unfortunately, the biological clock is such that, that the peak fertility is between 20 to 30 and after 35 it starts reducing. So if women start looking at pregnancy post 35, there is a possibility that it might be extremely difficult. So that's the reason why now AMH testing is gaining so much importance so that we can predict when the lady's fertility potential is and if there is a reduction of this hormone which is indirectly indicative of low reserve the lady should take fertility as a priority and either freeze eggs or start looking at venturing into a pregnancy. AMH testing is a simple blood test which can be done at any point of the menstrual cycle. It doesn't necessarily have to be at a certain day of cycle unlike other hormones which we tend to do on the day two of menses. So AMH can be random. It could be done in the early follicular phase or just pre-menstrual, any part of the menstrual cycle. And what it does, it, it, it basically gives us a number. Now this number is indicative of what is the quantity of eggs in the lady. Now knowing how much reserve is there in the lady helps us plan whether there is an urgency to look into pregnancy or she can take it lightly. Now who should consider doing AMH testing? Well, there's no hard and fast rule that a person should not do an AMH testing. We have to understand that this is this test is very unique to identifying fertility potential. So any person above 20 who has supposed regular periods may want to check it. Or if they are having regular menses and they are even in a later age, say at 30, they have regular cycles but they don't foresee a pregnancy in a year or two, I would strongly suggest that they should do their AMH just to make sure that the fertility potential is good. And once they find out that it is good, it is okay to postpone for a year, not more than that. After a year, if they still want to postpone further, then year on year, they should consider doing an AMH test just to know and have an approximate idea as to what pace they are reducing their egg reserve. So, anti-malarian hormone is a hormone. So, basically, the tests that analyze this hormone is basically are giving us a quantitative assessment of this hormone in the blood. Now, this hormone is secreted by the cells in the ovary. Now, the reduction in this hormone indicates that the egg cells are lesser, higher the hormone it indicates that the egg cells are more. So usually we take somewhere 2 to 4 as a normal value which indicates that the lady has adequate and normal reserve. A value less than 2 should be considered that there is a borderline reduction, somewhere between 1 to 2 should be considered as a borderline reduction and possibly the lady should either conceive, plan towards a conception or consider freezing eggs. If in case the value is less than 1, so one needs to really take it seriously because possibly those are the last few eggs that we 
we are dealing with in the ovary and fertility should be considered as an emergency and you know has a priority if the person really thinks that she would want to have pregnancy at some point of time a value more than 4 is considered a high value now this is usually seen in women who have plenty of follicles or eggs in the ovary and the condition wherein there is a higher number of eggs in the ovary is nothing but polycystic ovarian syndrome which is also a kind of hormone disturbance leading to excess number of eggs and sometimes they don't mature don't release leading to irregularity in menses which is called as PCOS or PCOD now reduction in uh, anti-mullerian hormone or AMH can happen due to several reasons. The commonest is idiopathic wherein the cause is not known. For some reason the lady has exhausted and with time it's going to come down further. It can also happen in some conditions say if a lady has suffered a ovarian cyst in the past or conditions like endometriosis wherein you know there is accumulation of menstrual blood in the ovary. History of laparoscopic surgery is for removal of cysts. Now all these conditions the normal ovary tends to get eroded either because of the disease or because of the surgery due to which the egg number starts coming down and when the egg reserve starts coming down AMH levels are also bound to reduce. Now these are the conditions wherein AMH can be found to be low. So when we speak about ovarian reserve it's not only AMH there is one additional marker that helps us know whether the reserve is good. This is called as antral follicle count which is done by an ultrasound examination for a person or a lady which is a transvaginal ultrasound and wherein the doctor or the operator counts the number of eggs in the ovary. Now having at least 8 to 12 eggs in each ovary is the normal number that we find in women. If this antral follicle count starts reducing this will corroborate with the anti-mullerian hormone test too. So if we find that a person has low AMH it cannot be a sole indicator that the reserve is low. The person should also consider doing an ultrasound to estimate the antral follicle count which will help us corroborate the findings and actually come to an interpretation of what we are dealing with. The disadvantage of AMH is also the fact that it should not be considered as a single value and interpreted. It usually should be interpreted along with the age of the person, along with history of any diseases like endometriosis and of course an antral follicle count. So now keeping all these into consideration is how a doctor usually interprets the reserve and then gives a guidance as to how the person should take it forward.